Hi everyone and welcome to Valley Crafty Corner. Um, just sharing a layout that I made uh, with the October uh, Studio Calico Kit. And here I started off with that uh, looks like parquet flooring, um, that background sheet. And then I had some uh, leftovers from a layout. So, um, or sorry, no, I just started cutting these up because I just thought, well, I had prepped a little bit ahead of time. So that word background is from the Teresa Collins uh, piece of paper and uh, the other piece uh, that light kind of gray piece that's from that almost looks like a lace scallop and then that green piece is from uh, one of the other pages I can't remember which what it looks like on the other side. And here I'm just taking some vintage photo ink and inking up the edges just because there was a lot of brown going on so I thought I would just use the brown. In hindsight I wish I would have used the black because there was a lot of black accents. Um, just I think the black would have melded a little better than than the vintage photo. But anyway hindsight's 2020 right? So anyway so I started off with that piece of paper and you see I cut off a little bit just because I wanted uh, it not to go all the way across. And then I was just laying them out just to see how it looked. And I tried to use that ledger washi tape, but it's just it was just so thick that it just kind of turned me off a little bit. Um, I know a lot of other people have been using it, and i seen Nicole from Scrapology. She had a really cool layout. Uh, using it the wider part of the tape and I liked how her layout did so I might do a take on on her layout that she did and here I'm taking a glassine bag and I'm just cutting off that ragged edge um, I wanted to mat the photos and it just needed a little bit more layering than what was going on and um, that glassine bag muted down that gray tone a little bit and that piece of paper is one of those uh, cards that comes with the Studio Calico um, kit where I think this one says digital files. I showed it on my haul video for Studio Calico. And then here I'm taking those uh, vellum shapes and I was just trying to see if I can make some of them work. Uh, and I think, I yeah, I stuck with that blue stripe one. And I ended up using that yellow uh, badge, the flare badge, the one that says Instagram on it. Although it's not an Instagram picture and I don't do Instagram as much as I probably should, I just liked how that button looked. So, and then I think here I'm just trying to play around and see, see there's that washi tape again and I still tried using it again. But I ended up cutting it in half and I found it was a little bit more manageable. Um, so it, it was kind of a pain in the butt to cut in half. Uh, but it does, it did suit my purpose a little better than using the full sheet. So I just followed along one of the lines um, on that ledger tape and then I just went along with it. So I was just making sure that was going to work and I just set it aside. And then here's where I'm committing to everything. I'm going to start um, gluing everything down. Normally I don't use that much glue on my pieces of paper. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, usually I just use a little bit so that I can layer quite easily underneath things. Um, and I don't know why I use that much. See, like that was even a little too much for me. But um, you'll see I start using it a little less and less over this layout. So yeah, here I'm just layering things. Oh, see there that that gray paper, the back side of it is that green um that green print. So, and then here I just inked up that blue uh piece just so that it would match all the other papers with that um vintage photo. Just had a little bit of troubles getting it where I needed it to be. And that's usually why I don't use so much glue is so that I can peel things up and, and stick things underneath and it doesn't wreck my paper. So that's why I was kind of a little mad at myself because I used so much glue on some of those layers that it was a little harder to pull up. 
And here I'm sticking that washi tape underneath the layout. Um, I find it's easier for placement for me to stick the, the washi tape underneath after the fact. Because 90% of the time when I go to lay the washi tape down um, before, generally it's not in the spot where I wanted it in the first place. So I just usually, um, you know, try to tuck the washi tape underneath if I can. And then uh, I was trying to think of more embellishments at this point that I could use. So I was looking at that asterisk stamp to see if I could use it. And no, not at least not yet. Um, I'm not completely happy with how this layout turned out. Um, it's just I wish I would have did uh, things a little bit different. And, and as the layout... Um, little video goes on here I'll maybe explain what I would have done differently and this is a branding strip off of one of the pieces of paper and honestly I don't remember which one it was um, I believe it is from um, I think it's from that one with the gray uh, lattice printer lace print on it and I'm pretty sure and then I just inked up the edges on it And then just tucking it underneath. I just found that it needed to have something else to ground all that layering of paper to the washi tape. The washi tape was just, it wasn't sitting well enough on its own with that layering under, like over top of it. And I brought that uh, little Enfera lay, um, sticker or ticket, ticket stub, sorry. And I know I'm going to use that. And here I only cut that little label piece in half because I thought, well, maybe I could use the other half and just cut that little uh, speech bubble part off and use it as a label like I did here on a different layout. And then I brought out that Amy Tangerine, the speech bubble paper. And I knew I wanted to have it say Happy Thanksgiving, so I thought it would be cool to use one of those speech bubbles to emphasize, like, everybody saying Happy Thanksgiving. So, of course, the one I wanted to use is right in the middle of the paper. And so I was kind of bummed out about that, because to me that seems like almost a waste of the paper. But, you know, it is what it is, and I used it, and I'm happy with how that speech bubble turned out. But, of course, it's always how it goes. The one you want is right in the middle of the page. So, But anyway, I know I'll use the rest of the paper. And here I just trimmed it out. And I didn't do a very good trimming job. So you'll see me later take some black set ink and uh, just kind of re-ink the edges so that it looks normal. And here I'm going to chop the video up a little bit. Um, I took those basic gray stickers and I spelled, well... I have a really bad time with spelling backwards, so I wrote out Happy Thanksgiving on a post-it note so that I knew which letter would come next. And here it's just zooming in so that you could see it. Uh, but I, I cut out it um, because I had troubles with sticking down the letters, so I cut out a little bit of this. So here we jump right to where it's finished. And... Uh, I really liked how those stickers looked on that. It was kind of a really subtle title. Um, I didn't want an overwhelming title at this point because there was a lot going on in the picture, in the layering. So it was kind of nice to have a really muted title. And here I was uh, trying to use that asterisk. And I really like how it turned out on this part. And this is gray wool ink from Close to My Heart. So I inked it up with the solid piece in the gray, and then you'll see me come in with the black, jet black archival ink from Ranger, and I just wanted to define that gray because there was a lot of black outlining um, on the papers, and I felt like it needed that black outline to just kind of match everything rather than just be a gray asterisk. And I know it's hard to see here, but it, it but you, um, but trust me, there is a black outline around that uh, gray asterisk. And then see here, I'm I'm taking that black set ink and just redefining that black 
edge just because I had maybe not cut properly or whatever. But uh, yeah, I was making sure that I had a more defined black line. And here I kind of went off camera a little bit, but I started outlining the letters. And again, I'm going to chop it up here in a minute just because I didn't want to bore you with all of it. But um, I just outlined the letters just because it was getting a little lost in the page. So I just outlined them in a very thin, I think it was a 0 0.01 of my precision markers um, in black. And here I took one of those little um, enamel dots, I think is what they're called. And I put a green one in the middle just because there was green on the other side of the photo. I wanted to balance it out a little bit. And because the layering, I put foam dots on one side and then you'll see me just put a glue runner on the other side. And I took out those little cute little puffy stickers and I kind of did like a house, a car, and then a house. And it was to kind of symbolize like we're coming from our house and then we drove and we were at their house. Thanksgiving so you know kind of like uh, hieroglyphics is what I would call it but you know I used the colors that were um, already present in uh, the layout going on like the gray the black and the brown so uh, and then I have that ticket and it I had a little bit of hard time trying to find out where it was and um, that's the black soot ink from Ranger and I was putting it there because the camera wasn't focusing on the layout. So that is the reason why you see me looking like all crazy like. But now you can see a good close up look at uh, that little title piece. So I decided I'd maybe zoom out and see if it would eventually focus. And it didn't. So I just ended it and started over again. And now we're back in focus. So, uh, that ticket ended up going in the vertical position rather than the horizontal. It just added a little bit more um, depth to the photo maybe is what I'm trying to say. Uh, it didn't look good horizontal for sure. It would just kind of elongated everything too much. So I put everything on the vertical. And here I'm doing journaling and I'm going to cut it off short again because I didn't want to bore you with it. Um, just because uh, I didn't, I wasn't sure what I was going to write anyway, so uh, it took me a while to do my journaling. And there I'm just putting the date in. So here we're going to get cut off. There we go. Okay, so now we're back to um, the page. And I think here, yeah, so here is where I screwed up. I wasn't really happy with the result of what I did here. So I took some white embossing powder and hindsight 2020, I wouldn't have done this. Um, I took those asterisks and uh, like here, I'm just, I'm just preparing for the embossing and I took the Versamark embossing powder, pardon me. And uh, I think here I'm looking for it. There we go. So I alternated with the solid asterisk and the outlined one. And I don't think I should have used the embossing powder because there was a lot of creams and other colors going on that the white is very distracting against everything else like it distracts away from the photo collage it distracts away from the journaling um, I would not have done this if I would have realized how it would have turned out so here I tapped it off and because I didn't take um, a dryer sheet or a, an embossing buddy I got white powder all over everything so I had to take a brush and uh, tap it off and it was very painstaking and uh, very frustrating so hindsight I wouldn't have done this part for sure um, so yeah here I'm just cleaning it up as best as I can and it still wasn't 
great. And so yeah, just cleaning that up. And you can see it was quite painstaking because I had little flecks of embossing powder all over the place. So then just putting the rest back in. And here I'm just going to heat emboss it. And I love embossing powder because it's so cool how it melts and it changes color. So see how it's really, really stark white compared to everything else that's going on? Um, I think what I would have done next time or if I was to do something like this again, I think I would have maybe done it in black. Not black embossing powder, just black ink. Um, I think it would have maybe worked out a little better. Um, and then here, just to balance things off, I did it on the top. And see, you can see I did a used a dryer sheet this time just so um, I wouldn't be so frustrated with the embossing powder this time. So again, I did the follow the same pattern. And I uh, just had a few flecks that time, so it was way less aggravating. And then just heat it, heating it up. Now, this time it didn't take nearly as long because, first of all, there's less, and my heat gun was already heated up. So it didn't take nearly as long as the other one. So then... Yeah, so you see what I mean? Like that white was overly distracting against everything else that was going on here at this point. Um, I tried to see if I could do anything else to it, and you'll see that I get I kind of struggle with it a little bit. And here I'm just laying down um, that title, and uh, here's a little bit of a close-up of so you can see what's going on. Actually, at this point, I kind of thought maybe I would be done because I was I just got frustrated with it, but um, I did actually end up adding some more to it. So, um, you know, I really tried to make it work, but you know, I'm I was just not happy. And here you can see, like, I flashed and and I came back and I tried. I added some washi tape to see if it could work. I tried to pull a little bit more of that blue out of uh, that background blue piece of paper uh, so I pulled out that washi tape um, I wasn't sure it was gonna work out so that's why I didn't record the part of me putting down the washi tape and really it wasn't really necessary for me to record it and then I'm sticking down that flare badge finally um, and just yeah, it, I don't know what is going on with my camera. It's just every now and again it does not focus. And maybe it's just because I don't have an, a really good setup for it yet. So I was just looking at it just to see if there's anything else that I could do at that point to fix it. And, you know, it just got overly frustrating uh, and I'm sure you you guys know what I'm talking about when you try to do a layout and it's just not going the way you want to. And that's my little corningware dish of extra little die cuts and and pieces and and such. So that's an extra piece that I tried using on the Andrew and the Grasshopper layout. And I liked how it kind of added a little bit more up at the top, so I added that in. And here I added some of that lace that we got from pop from the pop off the page kit. Um, I liked how it made it look like a down home country kind of uh, look, and it also matched that lace that was on uh, the coffee table that we were sitting behind. So I thought that was kind of cool. And I just add some glue and just stick it underneath and just for a cool little layer and that washi tape wasn't exactly what I wanted there was yellow going on up where the Instagram button was but there wasn't yellow going on anywhere else um, other than that little strip that was underneath the photos and it just 
I needed some more yellow just to kind of lay pull everything in um, so I like the washi tape and then the ribbon over top I am just not fond of those little asterisks it just is a little bit too much so that was an error on my part and I'm here again just trying to look for um, something else to put on it and these are like the little wood veneer stars from Studio Calico that we got in the pop off the page kit and I just thought well they might add something else to it so that it's not quite so distracting like the little asterisks and I don't have the wood veneer asterisks so um, so yeah I used the stars to try to um, blend in uh, what I had made as an error so I know I'm sure what I'm doing right now I think I'm going to get glue or something like that or I'm still looking maybe for something else so yeah that is I'm not sure what that was I think that was a piece from the October afternoon farmhouse collection I think and still I'm still frustrated and still looking in my little bin to see if there's any die cuts and I found these little um, flyer flags or whatever you want to call it from October afternoon and I believe this is from the farmhouse collection as well I usually just throw all of my uh, Amphara pieces and my little die cuts in that cording wear dish and then I just file through it um, I find I'm using way more uh, pieces than what I was so uh, so I was just running some glue and then I'm just gonna stick it underneath that flare badge so I like how that part turned out and I tried to use a couple other pieces and that ribbon wasn't straight and I'm kind of a fussy person at things not sitting right because it makes it look a little wonky so I just kind of peeled off that ribbon and started over just to make it sit a little flatter then I just staple it down again and then that's another one of those little gold doily pieces that we got from last month's uh, Studio Calico kit. I tried stapling it but for whatever reason this time they did not want to sit with a stapler like with the staples through it so I used a glue dot instead and that seemed to work really well. And I'm just still rifling looking and hoping that I can find something else that looks pretty neat and I took that little hand piece off just because it was a little too much and just keep I just keep trying and trying and, and I'm sorry guys but this is not my usual standard of of uh, layout pages but I like to share my frustrations as well as my uh, really good layouts um, just because I think it's important for me to learn um, as well as for you guys to learn that you know you learn from your mistakes so um, you know like this is a lesson learned and I'm documenting uh, a, a mistake that I had made so uh, that little snapshot uh, stamp is from a Studio Calico uh, kit and I stamped it in I think that one was Cup of Joe if I remember right and then what I did is I actually bought a melting pot and I haven't really played around with it too much but I was just trying to see you know how the embossing powder melted and what it looked like so I took that uh, snapshot piece that I had stamped on a piece of paper and I dipped it in the um, uh, the embossing powder the ultra thick emboss embossing powder and it really made a cool little glaze over top of it um, kind of looked like one of those enamel dots so I thought that was pretty neat and then here I'm just gluing down uh, these little stars just to I didn't use as many as I had laid down originally I didn't want to overpower 
the star thing too much because there was already too much going on. So, um, so here we're going to have a close up look at the layout. And again, it's not up to the standards that I usually do. And uh, you can see like those asterisks are just not the best thing that I would have put down. So anyway, that's the video and thanks for watching and I hope to talk to you soon.